I'd like to welcome you to our teaching series, a very important one. It has to do with compulsive obsessions. We live in a very exciting world today, and I am a person who gets about the world. <clears throat> Oftentimes I'm in five different cities in one week, dealing with many hundreds of people, and, and uh, we, we meet people. And then we, we go overseas. This year I have been in 20 nations. So we're meeting people where the, where the rubber reach, meets the road, you know. And, and we are, we're very concerned about compulsive obsessions. Because I find not only in this country, but in other countries, uh, there are many people who have been entrapped by the evil one. It reminds me of a verse that I'd like to read to you. And that, and that comes to us from uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. And verse 8, it says, uh, be sober. Now, now, he is not talking about uh, uh, alcoholic beverage. He is talking about thinking correctly. Don't, don't think as if you're drunk. Don't be stupid. Uh, be sober. Then he says, be vigilant. <clears throat> Uh, a more modern word would be watchful. That means that there are things taking place that if you're blind, you don't see. I mean, spiritually blind, morally blind, uh, educationally blind, you know. Uh, uh, be vigilant. It says your adversary, <clears throat> say adversary. That's right. Uh, adversary. And I'm, some people don't know they have an adversary. It says, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, <clears throat> the wildest beast of the jungle, the towering uh, beast of the jungle who pushes others aside, who when he goes to the springs of water, everybody else leaves until he gets through. Uh, the roaring lion, it, it says, that as a roaring lion, he goes about uh, seeking whom he may devour. The devil goes about uh, seeking whom he may devour. I, I, would, I, I would like for you to, to see and to understand that you have an enemy. A lot of Americans don't realize that, and, and other nations also, that there is an enemy of your happiness, of your peace, of your joy, of your contentment, and of your destiny. And that he isn't a timid little lamb. He is a roaring lion, the king of the beast. A roaring lion. It doesn't say he is one, he says as one. So you take what the roaring lion of the African jungle is like and does, and, and then you compare that in the spiritual realm to what the devil is trying to do today. It reminds me of a very exciting story, and I may have a reference to it somewhere uh, here close by, and I would like to, to pull it out. It has to do with a gentleman that I knew very well. Uh, his name was Lem Jivaratnam. Uh, he was an Indian man that was a very good uh, friend of mine. Uh, he was an Indian sadhu, a lamb jivaratnam. We became close friends just before World War II in England. Uh, India at that time was part of the British Empire, and, and he was traveling through the churches in England, witnessing and testifying. And he had more power, more strength, over evil spirits than I've never met over five people in my lifetime uh, that had equal authority over demon spirits. Uh, we stayed in the same home together and we talked together, we ate together uh, as we had conferences in the same city. And he told me, he, he said, uh, Lester, uh, one day I was walking down a road with my Bible uh, to a preaching engagement says it was only four or five miles, and I was alone. And he says, as I walked along meditating, suddenly in front of me was the most beautiful 
Indian girl in her sari that you could ever imagine. Her beautiful clothes swinging around her and her gorgeous face telling me to come to her. I, I, there were trees on both sides like woods and here she was saying, come to me. Suddenly my whole being seemed to change and a lust for a woman came inside of me stronger than ever before. I caught my breath and I said, Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, save me now. And, and as I did, I closed my eyes and said, I believe you, Lord. I opened them and she was not there. Well, I said, you were there two minutes ago. He says, I looked in, around all the trees on this side of the road and over on, on, on that side of the road. And a man came by and I said, have you seen a, a very beautiful young lady walking down this road? He said, no, I've been here all the time. And there has, there has not been any young woman walking down this road. And he said, Lord, what was this? And the Lord said, the devil as a roaring lion goeth about seeking whom he may devour. Says, if in your heart, if you would have said, yes, 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 I receive you. Says, the spirit of lust would have come upon you. Because that was a demon spirit of lust. A seductive, seducing spirit of lust. And said, you would never have been the man of God that you are now if you had given in to that and accepted that. Now here was a, now he was a very good man and, and a very, very wonderful Christian person. And, and I know he saw this. And he says, I just want you to know that God delivered me. He actually delivered me from that seducing thing that could have captured me so easily. I was alone, you know, on a road with woods on both sides, a hiding place. And I called for the blood of Jesus and that person could not be found and could not be seen. It, it, that is an amazing uh, situation to me. In our country today, the devil is seeking to destroy our whole nation through demon power. I have many talks on this and I'm not bringing you those right now. But in our nation today, millions of people are being tormented by demon power. And we would like for you to know and to be aware and to be in an attitude of prayer and knowing that the devil as a roaring lion goes about seeking whom he may devour. And it continues by saying, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist steadfast in the faith. In our schools today, they do not permit the Bible to be read. They do not permit prayer to be said. But they permit all kinds of witchcraft a Satanism of demon power. Uh, this this uh, that I hold is a copy or, or, uh, or uh, Xerox of a high school uh, paper, a little magazine from the high schools. And on this big open spread of two whole pages, they have a a demon spirit on one side that's, that's used by the, uh, uh, it's, it's used by, by one of the rock and roll groups. I have seen the thing uh, on, on, on television. A, 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 a demon spirit. Which one of these cameras is going to hit it? A demon spirit, you see. And I know it's a Xerox, but you can see the face just, just, just a little bit there. This young girl 
who's on the staff of the, of the little paper, says it. I am a pagan. It says, witchcraft is my total future. She learned this in high school. A friend in high school taught her about witchcraft. She's asking everybody to join up with it. She says Christianity is dead. And that all that it ever had, it stole from witchcraft. <laughs> Knows nothing about history. She doesn't know that witchcraft was so complicated in Egypt that it was Joseph who cast it down that the witchcraft of Egypt could not. And then after he died, it came back again. Witchcraft never ceases. Moses had to throw it down again because there was your witchcraft. In Joseph's day, they couldn't, they couldn't speak of the future. They were liars. And in Moses' day, they tried to mock, counterfeit what God was doing, and it didn't work. And Daniel's day in Babylon, there they were again. And through all the empires they have come. And through all the nations, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany, England, and now America. Witchcraft is growing faster in this country than anything else. And it is reaching into high society and low society. Now, I just want to tell you very clearly, witchcraft is of the devil. It will take you to hell. There are millions of people in hell who went there through witchcraft. Then I'd like to ask you a question. Why hasn't witchcraft blessed the people of India? They have worshipped the devil for centuries and centuries and centuries. They have demonized men that can lay on nails and walk on fire. Why hasn't it blessed that country? You're taking the blessings of Christianity, including the school that you're in. And you're there taking hold of the death of the empires, you know, and trying to revive Satan worship in a country that would not permit witches. Now, the Bible says that you should not permit a witch to live in a country where you want God to communicate with you. Now, you can follow the Bible and not follow the Bible. But in every society where God became imminent, witches had to go. We have tens of thousands of young people that are playing today with Satanism, all kind of forms of, of uh, heathen worship. This little girl says she believes in reincarnation, that you can bring back people after people. All she's doing is aping what she's read. Doesn't know anything about it at all. Just a high school student. And I am urging all of my fellow Christians worldwide come against witchcraft. Because it all ends up <clears throat> in compulsive obsessions. I have literally prayed for hundreds, men and women and, and young people, for them to be relieved from the awfulness of possession of obsession. This young woman that wrote this article for the, for the school newspaper will come under this compulsive obsession. She will become so full of this that she can't think of anything else. This thing will become so powerful in her life until it will become her life. And what will it do for her? Nothing. It has never done anything for anybody in the history of the world. It is a complete deception. In 1 Timothy 4 and 1, the great apostle said these words. The Spirit, meaning the Holy Ghost, speaks expressly that in the latter times, that's today, some shall depart from the faith. They shall 
say the Bible is not true. The Bible is fables. They should depart from the truth of God that builds nations, that builds families. I never heard of a witchcraft family in my life where they were truly happy. Never known of such a thing. It divides families, it, sep it separates families. It makes people do very stupid things. The devil is a very poor leader. He's had a thousand years in Tibet. What has he done for those people up there? The people that came to this country 300 years ago have built the greatest nation on the face of the earth. They didn't build it with witchcraft. They didn't build it with demonic creatures like you see here in their magazine. They did, built it with the pureness of the Ten Commandments, of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus preached. And they did it with a family bound together, not in witchcraft. The Lord has moved so strongly within me that it is now time for every good person of any denomination to stand up against all forms of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's 1 Timothy 4 and 1. It was prophesied by the Holy Ghost himself that in these last days, this is what you would absolutely see. There will be many apparitions like we heard of Lam Jivaratnam. There will be many different kinds of seductions that will take place. Some national leaders in evangelism fell prey to exactly what I'm talking about right now. They were trapped by the devil. They didn't have to be. If they'd been living close to God, reading the word, and having a humble heart on the inside of them, they would not. But when you think you're the king of something, as some of these television evangelists, and when you think you're the top, and that God certainly needs you, you're in trouble. We need God, but God doesn't need us. We just need God. And in our need for God, it flows out and blesses others, but it's God that does the blessing and not man. It's God that does the providing and not man. And we have to know this. We have to know this. I see many women, number one. A woman came to my office here. She had bite marks all over her shoulders and arms. And she said they were all down her back. And her husband stood there and said, she gets that lying in bed with me. And I don't touch her. And she's thrown onto the floor. Now, he was a wealthy businessman in Gary, Indiana. She was a, a beautiful, beautiful person, beautiful lady. But somewhere along the line, she had played with witchcraft and her beauty. And she had possibly been reading how to get this power over people. It's all a thirst for power that doesn't belong to you. That's what witchcraft is all about. Seeking for authority over others. Seeking for dominance over others. That's the reason the Bible says Satan comes as a roaring lion. And it doesn't say a lion with his teeth out either. A roaring lion. And these hours of which we live right now, he's roaring louder than ever before. Now the Lord has spoken to me very strong and said that by television, in one prayer, 10,000 people would be set free from the devil's power. This might be that day. I'd like to say to any one of you that's had knockings in your house, scratches on your body, any manifestation of the devil, 
and of evil, including the air that's around you. I cast the devil out of a lawyer in Miami, Florida. I should never forget. He saw creatures exactly like this one here. He described them. When I looked at this, I said, whoo, that's the same creatures that were seen in Miami, Florida. And when I came against those things, he said there were a dozen of them laughing at him within three or four feet of him, around him. And I said, don't be afraid, they're leaving. And I laid my hand in his belly. There's a seat of authority in that area of your body. And I commanded these creatures to go by the blood of Jesus. And that attorney that was a high attorney in the, in, in the Florida courts was set free from alcoholism and from these delirium tremens. These things would come upon him and he'd see these demons and he wouldn't even go down to the courthouse to plead a case. He'd just tell them he was sick or something. We set him free by God's mighty power. And I'm ready to see you set free right now. Receive it. The king of the world is the Lord Jesus Christ. Supreme power is in the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I come now to set you free from every adversity of the devil. And I come to set you free of every overwhelming power that has come against you. And of every compulsory situation imposed upon you, I come now to set you free by the blood of Jesus. In John 8 and 36, it says, in whom the Son sets free, that's Jesus Christ. They are free indeed by the blood of Jesus. Now, come out. Come out. Um, you're being set free this very moment. Come out of them and be free. Raise your hands. Praise God. Find a Bible and read the whole Gospel of John in the New Testament without stopping. And let the Word of God come within you because faith cometh by reading the Word of God, hearing the Word of God. We have all kinds of helping material. Call the number on your screen and let's get going with it in Jesus' name. Many of you need the audio tape of what you've just heard. You can order it from the addresses on the screen or you can telephone in and use your Visa card or number or you can use any of your cards that you wish. You should get it today. We have video of what you have seen for your home, for your TV set. We want you to have it. Why don't you get it today? We must set America free from the lying wonders of the devil. We must not let our little children become demon worshipers. Christian schools have to be because there are no moral standards in your public schools. We need each other right now to stand together against the roaring lion of hell. Please let me hear from you today, from all over this nation, from around the world. Let me hear from you today. Ask for a catalog on all the things that we have on this subject. We have so much of it. Be a teacher in deliverance to set people free. We have other studies coming. This is study number seven. There's six before this one. Be sure and get them all. Will you do that? God loves you. We do too.